Hey everyone, welcome back to another episode of Visual Studio Toolbox. We are in our 18 part series all about getting started with Maui and XAML. We are, I'm your host, Leslie Richardson. Should introduce yourself again. <laughs> I'm your co host, Robert Green. And, and yep. Paul Sheriff. <laughs> hey, how are we all doing? <laughs> yep, joined once again by Paul. And in the last episode, we got started writing our first app. We talked a little bit about, um, resizing for Windows or for whatever um, machine or uh, location that you're trying to build your app for. And now we and we also explored a couple of the cool tools that Visual Studio offers to make it easier, such as Hot Reload and the Live Tree and the um, the Binding Tree, or sorry, the Binding Window, I forget what it's the called. The In-App Toolbar, which it yep. turns out that you can turn on. And then when you load the app, there's just these two little lines at the top yep. and you could easily not know it's there. <laughs> yeah, just a collapsible thing. Yeah. So it yeah. is. Yeah. Nice. <laughs> cool, yeah. And this episode, we are going to talk about how to be able to do your all of your layout related needs as far as web apps go with the help of grids, right? Well, yeah, not a web app, a Maui app. But, you oh, know. Sorry, yeah, Maui app. <laughs> You got it. Yeah. <laughs> but yeah, let's kind of let's kind of start building like a, a you know typical data entry screen, right? And I'm just going to build it on the main page right now, and then we'll start adding more screens a little bit later. But I'm going to take out the label here, and instead I'm going to put in a grid. Okay. Now, if you've worked with XAML before, you're probably used to grids. Now, grids are really neat. What a grid allows you to do is allows you to have you know basically rows and columns. Okay, so we can define these rows and columns two different ways. You can see here I can do row definitions, and I can do equal auto comma auto, and I'll explain that in a minute. And I can do column definitions equals auto comma star. The other way to do it, which is kind of a little bit more the old fashioned way, is you can do grid dot row definitions, and then you do a sorry a row definition. And you can say the height equals auto. And you put as many of those as you want. And then you would do the same thing with the grid.column definitions. So you can do it that way, or you can simply do it the way I had it at the beginning, which I find is much better. And that's just to use row definitions and column definitions up there. It just makes the XAML a little bit smaller. Um, this is new in Maui. And it's not available in WPF at this point, uh, but I love this feature here. Now, what a grid does is allow you to have rows and columns, and then we use what are called attached properties. Now, in attached properties, I've got a label, and I do grid dot. So grid says go to the parent of this guy, and now set what row he's going to be in. He's going to be in row zero, and he's going to have a column span that goes across two columns. Because remember, there are two columns defined, an auto and an asterisk. And I will explain that in just a second. Then you can see the second label I have here within the grid. It starts on grid row one, also has a grid dot column span of two. So it's spanning across both columns. So we have the ability to put things into one column or the other, or we can span across columns, whatever we want to do. Now, what is this auto and this asterisk and all this? So, I mean, if I wanted to, I could put in, you know, kind of some hard-coded numbers here if I want, but wow, I'm not sure I really want to have hard-coded height and widths, right? If you think about it, that could really wreak havoc on your design. We want things that will flow. That's what auto. Auto says, look in the row for the largest height of a control and make the row height equal to that height, plus whatever little paddings that we do. And I'm, we'll talk about that in a minute as well. And then the asterisk means use up whatever space is left over. So if you think about columns, you've got a screen this wide. Your first column, auto, says, well, take whatever the largest amount of text or whatever is the widest portion. And, uh, and then for the second column, we're going to use up the rest of the space to make up the whole width of that screen, okay? So there we are with that. So all I've done so far, let's go ahead and run this so we can kind of take a look at it. 
but then you can also decide to limit the width if you want the text to wrap, right? So, Correct. Yeah, and we're gonna talk about all the wrapping and things like that coming up in a bit. Now, I'm gonna do this again. I'm gonna kind of break this down so we can watch them side by side again, because I really like that. I think that works really well. All right, so now you can see that I've got a grid. You see the first label is there, and the second label is right below it in the next row. What's interesting, right, is, you know, what if I didn't have the grid here, what if I just had a label with text, sorry, equal to high, like so. And then if I tried to do another label, like so, okay, what would happen? Well, it's, as you can see, I got a little squiggly here and it says you can't set the content more than once. The content means whatever is between the opening tag of content page and the closing tag content page. This is called the content. And you can't have more than once, you're limited to one, unless you have another container. Content page is a container that allows a single uh, content element, but grid is one that allows you to have more than one. So that's why I can have more than one label there. Now, let's go ahead and add a couple more autos here. So now I'm gonna have four rows. So that means below this, I wanna add a couple more things. So I'm gonna do a couple more things, again, within the grid. Make sure that you do all this within the grid. So what I'm doing now, if we take a look over here, as you can see right below that label, I added a what's called a box view. And the box view is in grid row two, it's also spanning across both columns. I've set a margin, which I'll talk about that in just a second. I set a height request of one. I change this, you can see, you can make this quite large, okay? So you can think of this just drawing a line, but they call it a box view because you can actually make a box out of it as well. And then of course the color. All right, what is margin? Margin has four things, left, top, right, and bottom. Okay, so left, top, right, and bottom. So I didn't care about the margins on the left, the top, the right, but I wanted the bottom, as you can see, to be a little bit, I wanted it kind of pushed away. The header, I wanted away from the entry elements that are gonna be here. Okay, and you can see those label, login ID, and then this entry. So now you'll notice the grid row three, login ID, the default for grid.column is zero. So I can leave it out if I want. Notice the entry goes into grid row three, but grid column one. So now you're able to see the two different columns. Remember I talked about the column definitions auto and asterisk, okay? So the thing about the auto is it says, okay, this column is gonna be this wide because login ID is the largest it's gonna be. Then the entry takes up the whole rest of the space. You can see it takes up all the way to the end of the screen. And notice I can actually squish this, right? And notice how the label even wraps. Isn't that nice? So that's all automatic. That's just all built in now. So the margin, if I wanted to, I could actually, I'm not sure what I had it before. I think I had it at 20, didn't I? There we go. The margin, I could actually make 20 all around. Okay, or I could do 10 on the left and right and 20 for the top and the bottom. So we have lots of options for this margin. All right, so there we go. Now I'm starting to see, you know, basically a little bit more of a, a detail screen now. Let's add the rest of them, okay? Let's add more rows. I'm gonna need three more rows, and I'm gonna add a bunch more labels and entries. So as you're designing your page, right, with all these different you know, a label and a data entry piece. So, you know, uh, there we go. Okay, so we've got labels and we have a place to enter some data. So all I've done here is I've made sure that I had enough rows to hold all of the various labels and entries that I need. And I think it goes without saying that everything is zero based, right, in .NET. So same thing here. Now, 
Robert, what is wrong with this screen? Other than the fact that it's ugly. Um, Thank you. Yes, wow. you're right. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. And part of the reason it's ugly is because there's just not a lot of spacing around things, is there? Right. Okay. Yeah. Now, the if you're you, are bugging me because they're like right at the edge. Yeah, they're really kind of butted up right up against each other. Okay. Now, if you're doing WPF, um, you know, or Silverlight back in the day, you would have used margin and padding. Okay. Well, here I like using column spacing and row spacing. Isn't that nice? So on this one grid, I can say, you know what, I want to put some spacing between all of the columns and all of the rows. You can choose how much space you want. You can do more on the rows and less on the columns and vice versa. Okay, whatever you want. Okay, I like that. I think that is really slick. It does cut down, you know, kind of how much I think styles that you have to do as well. Yep. Okay. And then if you want to move the whole thing over to the right, you can put margins on the grid without having to then do margins on every individual field. Why am I straight man there for the day? Because that was exactly <laughs> what I was going to do next. <laughs> so margin, right? Now, now it, it looks very usable. It's nicer. Yeah. Yeah. Now it's a lot yeah. nicer. Exactly. It's, it's not a five star app that you know, you're going to put in the store and win awards, but it's okay, I think like a, a three, yep. that's what it's supposed to do. <laughs> no, no, okay, I guess maybe not because there's like no submit button or anything, but yeah, you know, <laughs> yeah. functionality wise, <laughs> there we go. Plenty, plenty of places you can go. Best effort award, yeah, yeah. So, what is margin and what is padding, right? So, margin is the outside area, right? So, it's the it's the piece that says I'm on the outside of the imaginary border for the grid, if you will, and padding is on the inside. Right. So again, if we change each one of these, you'll kind of see the difference here. So there's the padding and there's the margin. Okay. So on a grid, it's not going to look that much different just because a grid, you know, but if we bid it on labels and things like that, you would actually see quite a big difference. You know, what we could do is add one down here. On this, well, let's not do it now. Let's do it on one of the entry ones. Let's go down to the log and have a ah. See, so look at see how that one moved. Mm -hmm. Okay. And notice that one ninety. Look at that. There's some padding for you, right? Yeah. All right. So margin and padding, very important. Okay, but I think for grids and for these other uh, layouts that we're going to talk about in the next section. Okay, you're going to use column spacing and row spacing, I think, a little bit more often than those. And and so this is obviously uh, this type of setting margins and paddings and moving things around is you can spend more time playing with the UI than you spend on the actual code and the business logic and the whole point of the app. So it's worth spending some time to understand these properties, but I I think a good uh, best practice would be to go look at a bunch of other people's samples, whether it's the official Maui samples or, you know, anybody who's got a GitHub repo with Maui apps, look at what they do, kind of get a sense of what you like to do, adopt it, stick to it, and then you can tweak from time to time. But, you know, if you're building your fifth app and you're spending 50 hours playing around with the margins and the row spacings, to get it pixel perfect, that's probably not a great use of your time. You should try to find out what's available and looks and feels that you like, and then just borrow heavily from what other people have done. Right. And we're going to cover a lot of that in, in a couple of sections from now mm -hmm. when we talk about styles, because we're going to be able to centralize all these so you don't yeah. have to put everything on the grid here. You could make all grids act the same using yeah. just one style. So that'll be where you really, and that's exactly what Robert's talking about. You go out and you find somebody that's got a styles.xaml file, you bring that in, boom, your app looks like theirs. Right. And then does it really matter in the grand scheme of things if the margin is 10 versus 15? Does, you know, does it make the app that much more usable? <laughs> and if it's an app only being used by yourself, do you really care? If it's going in the store and you want you know, it to be beautiful, 
then sure, then it's worth working with. But you yeah. can. I, I'd argue, yeah, I'd argue that there, there probably is. I mean, if you talk to maybe more UX experts, there's yeah. probably like a, a threshold of what are some good like margin numbers where it feels too cluttered or mm-hmm. it's too wide and like from a readability standpoint i think that could be like inaccessible yeah. in some cases yeah. potential but, like, but you could spend an hour fancy. finding out what those are on the web and then you know do a, a search on it <laughs> and adopt those and then <laughs> just move on yep yeah, absolutely so and you just centralize them as we'll talk about yep. later and then you're, you move on so yep yep exactly all right okay. so there we go that's our next one started got a start now of a detailed screen uh, so we've got the grid layout, which is one layout that we can use. In the next section, we're going to start talking about stack layouts, and that gives us a little bit more flow and also flex layouts. So very similar to what we have on the web. Awesome. Excellent. Great. Well, thank you, Paul. So tune in next time when we talk more layouts. Um, yeah, until next time, happy coding.